Hey, listen, the video that you're about to watch is meant to be inspirational. It's meant to share with you that when you set your mind to something, that there's nothing that really can get in the way of you reaching your potential. And um, if you have dreams, if you have aspirations, if there's certain things that you want in life, you can get them. Doesn't matter what goes on around you, you can get them. This is where I live now. And then, you know, it's, I'm, I'm proud to be able to stand here and be in a place that I feel good, I feel happy, I feel like I've really achieved a dream. When I was a kid, as you'll see in this video, I didn't grow up in a, in a home like this. I didn't live in a place like this. It didn't, it didn't exist for me, okay? What I grew up with was a dream and a desire to have more than what I had. Okay, now I didn't know early on that I also was talking about joy, happiness, fulfillment, and um, all of the, the wonderful things that come from that. When I was young, I just wanted to get out from where I was. So check out this video, pay close attention to the real message. The real message underneath it all is you come up with a dream, you see it in your mind, you visualize it, and then what you do is you take steps. I spent 30 years, what am I, 48 now? The video that you're about to watch shows me where I grew up and how I grew up. It's a long time ago. And I've come a long, long way from where I started. And look, I still have aspirations. I still have new dreams. There's never an end to it. But you can get anything you want in life. Check out this video. Comment down below. I want to know if you really get the point, if you really understand why I'm showing you what I'm showing you. Take the time. Check it out get motivated, get inspired, and reach your full potential. There's no excuses. So I usually start my videos off by saying, hi, this is Matt Rosenthal, the CEO of Mindcore. I thought today, uh, I happened to be up in New Jersey and I thought it would be a good opportunity while I happened to be in the area that I grew up in, and spent most of my life in, to stop back at the uh, garden apartment complex where I, uh, where I grew up. I don't really come, I drive by here, I've driven by here a million times and I've never really come back into this complex. So I thought in the spirit of, um, it's easy to, to, to talk about and look at who I am now and where I am now and, and you know, owning an IT company and being a real estate investor and having a very successful life financially, having a successful family life and you know, all that, that, that old, same old story. It's like everybody sees successful people as the successful people they've become, but where did it start? You know, where, where, how'd you get there? So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna take a quick walk around. So you can see behind me, there's a garden apartment complex here. Um, this is where I grew up. And um, I was actually born in Patterson, which is a city about 15 minutes from here in, uh, in New Jersey. And when we came back from the hospital, we came back to this garden apartment complex. And this is, this is where I grew up. I spent my first 18 years in this apartment, I'm gonna show you the two apartments that I actually grew up in, but I spent most of my time playing in the trees here, hanging out on top of the, the garage doors, uh, the garage roofs, um, hanging out with all the apartment kids. And that, that's kind of uh, one of the things that builds some character and, and sets some things in motion. And one of the things that it sets in motion is a desire to maybe want more. So you can see that apartment I don't want to go too close you can see that apartment right there with the bikes in the bushes that's where I grew up um, 97 it's a two-bedroom garden apartment I spent a lot of time playing uh, right on this lawn climbing in a tree that's no longer there but uh, a bit above me on the second floor there is where the superintendent lived and uh, or the manager of the garden apartment complex and there's some cool things that happened here some of the things that happened when I was a kid he uh, he would leave his door open and I would be able to go up and down the stairs and kind of spend time with him. It was, it was an interesting experience, you know, growing up here in a garden apartment. Um, you know, there's, it's, there's a certain simplicity to it, but there's also a, a want and a desire to have more because as I'm walking through the, the parking lot here, um, this is a wealthy town, or at least it was in the 80s and 90s. However, I grew up here and this wasn't a wealthy uh, place to, to live. I mean, People in these apartments struggled. And this is back in the 70s and 80s, people struggled. They used to come sit down here for hours and just kind of hang out and think. 
and listen to the laundry machines down there. Yeah. Haven't been here in a long time. Wow, this is where I did my laundry. Um, yeah, you know, it's a far cry from where I am now, but it's again, it's important to remember where you start and to uh, never forget that you work hard, you have grit, you have determination, and um, good things happen. That two bedroom apartment that I showed you actually is where we moved, but when um, when I was first born and we, we came back to this garden apartment complex, it was actually right there. It was a one bedroom apartment. And this playground right here was where we played. And there used to be a sandbox there where all the cats would live. That was always fun. Um, a lot of the kids would end up getting fleas and get uh, get bitten up playing in that, in that sandbox. Something else that I would do is I would come over here. I'm gonna show you where we would play football. All the, all the garden apartment kids, all the kids would come over get together we would play football this would be one end zone right here so you can see this big field we'd go all the way across between all these buildings so the sidewalk that i'm walking on was one end zone and then way down there the other sidewalk would be the other end zone so we would play uh tackle football we play middle of the winter all summer long we'd be out here playing football and uh this is where most of the kids kind of hung out in the uh in the complex there were a lot of kids here, and I tell you what, in the 70s and 80s, there were um, a lot of bullies, a lot of, a lot of fights, a lot of, um, you know, a lot of interesting things would happen in a place like this. And so I can tell you that there's, oh, actually, I just remembered something. There was a guy that lived in this apartment right here, right up upstairs there. He was actually uh, a county sheriff's officer undercover, and he would have his door open, and for some odd reason, he'd always be sitting there cleaning his guns. And so we would, uh, we'd go up there and sit there and watch him clean his guns. I mean, the stuff that goes on in, uh, you know, complexes like this, it's, uh, it's memorable stuff, but certainly, I mean, it would never happen in this day and age. A guy leaving his door open so the, the, kid, the kids in the neighborhood can come watch him clean his guns. You know, could you imagine? Um, but yeah, this, I grew up in this, in this garden apartment complex. I, standing here looking around, I can even, you know, I have memories coming back of, of the different kids I was friends with and their names and, you know how all the different things we would do and, and how we how we would uh find ways this is a big difference from now um, how we would find ways to have fun how we would find ways to be creative to find things to do you know how you know, riding our bikes um playing in different ways and just being creative there was nothing to do here nobody had any money there was no games there was no internet <laughs> there was no anything you know we just we just were a bunch of apartment kids kind of hanging out um trying to stay out of trouble but one thing i can tell you is that when you grow up in a place like this um it builds character for a lot of people it creates determination it creates a desire creates a want for more and um you know i can tell you i carry with me and i will always carry with me the um the experience that i had i lived here till i was 18 until i went to college so all i knew was living in this in this garden apartment uh, my brother and I shared one bedroom. We each had a twin bed. Our storage was the space under the bed. Um, we had one little closet, like the size of a coat closet. And uh, we shared that closet. You know, if we wanted to play, we came out here and we figured out things to do, like I said. You know, and, and growing up in, in this area with a lot of wealthy friends and a lot of wealth, a lot of wealthy people around, knowing that we weren't those people and that we didn't have that, it um you know it does different things to different people wow it's so funny walking past all these apartments i can actually remember so many people lived in these apartments and uh, so many things i haven't been here in a long long time um there's a little pathway here we used to be able to walk through here where all the snow is right now and go to the other apartment complex which is a um, different complex i had a bunch of friends over there we would spend a lot of time sitting on the roofs of these garages right here Right. We would sit on the roofs and kind of hang out. There used to be a lot of trees. I cut them all down so you could, you can kind of sit on top of a roof of a garage under the trees and hide out like a, a fort, you know, and, and feel like you had your own place. You know, there's there's a lot of things that, that come out of living in this way. But what I can tell you is um, the life that I have now exists because growing up as a kid in this apartment complex and experiencing this life um, for my entire childhood, like I said, till I was 18, the only thing I had, the only thing I could do was I could, I could dream about what a different life would be. And that's what I did. 
I created the life that I wanted. This used to be our garage right here, garage number eight. My mother wouldn't give me a key to the garage. I wasn't allowed to go in there without her. <laughs> she kept all of her most valuable stuff in the garage. I mean, it's kind of funny now with the ridiculousness of uh, that was our garage and, and there was nothing in there valuable. But you know, when you have nothing, the few things you have, you think are valuable. <laughs> you think they're a big deal. Um, it's funny just thinking back. This is a, in part one of the reasons that, I, that I've, I've achieved what I've achieved so far in life with life, business, um, financial success. And, um, you know, I don't know that it would have not happened anyway, but I can tell you that this definitely created a serious want, a serious desire. And um, I always was tuned into other people who seemed to have parents who did well and lived these um, lifestyles that uh, seemed to be just a lot more fun and you know, it's, it's, it's fun to have money. It's not, it's, there's nothing wrong with it. You should, you should have means, you should have fun. And, and, and I think the biggest lesson here for me is nobody handed me anything. I, I came out of this, this, um, you know, this experience and knew as a child that I didn't want to, I wanted more. I wanted to have different things in life. I wanted my kids to have different things in life. I knew as a child that I wanted a different life and I made a decision early on to, uh, to have that. Uh, you know, for those of you that watch my videos, you know I mention every so often, uh, when I was 12 years old, my father had passed away. Um, we were just on the brink, he was just on the brink of really breaking out, I think, and making, um, you know, really making some serious money. He was in real estate. I know that his partner at the time, who uh, recently died about a year ago, Charlie, had, um, after my father died, within the next couple of years, it went on to become a multi, multi-millionaire. So I think that our life would have changed at that point. So uh, yeah, my, my father would have probably ended up being a multimillionaire and we would have been telling a different story. We would have still found our way out of this apartment complex and out of this lifestyle, um, probably. Uh, however, it wasn't, you know, that wasn't what was in the cards for me. That wasn't what was meant to be. So I had to make it happen. I had to make it happen myself. It wasn't easy. It was a very difficult childhood. It was a very difficult experience, but out of that came tremendous growth and out of that came um, uh, a mindset of, of creativity when it comes to to finding ways to to make money finding ways to be of value finding ways you know to be of service to other people and that was really a huge part of what came out of this experience I mean I can't say that I thought about that and that was a I can look back on it and tell you that that's what happened but I can't say I was thinking it while it was while it was happening. I just knew instinctively that I needed something different. I needed something better. I knew that as a child. I knew that uh, after my father died, and I continued, we continued to live here, you know, off of uh, Social Security to pay the rent and everything. I knew that I, I didn't want to go to college and come back to the to to live here. I wanted more. I felt that I was capable of more, and I went out in the world and I made it happen. And that's the message. It doesn't matter where you start. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't, none of it matters. The only thing that matters is, uh, is what you do with, with uh, what you have between your two shoulders, you know? That head, that head on your shoulders, the brain, the heart. You can do anything. There's nothing that, can, that stops you. Um, it's really a matter of what you want to create. And um, I know a lot of people that never left this complex. I actually, I mean, literally, there's people that still live in these garden apartments that I um, grew up with. Um, actually, the ones across the street. I know some people still live here, and uh, there's nothing wrong with that. It's it's a choice, it's a choice everybody makes. But I made the choice to see what I was capable of and to see what potential I could reach in my life, and that's what this really comes down to. It's a matter of what you want in life, and and, and whether you're going to go out and you're going to create that or not. And there's nothing. Everybody has the same opportunity. There's nothing that was handed to me that made it any easier and and uh you know it, there, there's there's nothing that stopped me and and so i didn't let anything stop me every difficult thing that happened uh i just pushed through push and that's really an important message push through adversity keep pushing keep pushing and have a vision and know what, where you want to go know why you want to go there have a mission have a dream have a desire and take action and and that is really the story of how I, I got myself from here to where I am now. You know, we live in South Florida, a beautiful community with, um, you know, fortunately my children uh, don't have to 
experience the childhood that I did. But that being said, unfortunately, my children don't get the chance to experience this, to get to, to, to experience the need to have a dream in order to create a better life. And uh, that's, that's something I think about, and that's a challenge, but, um, you know, naturally you do the best you can, you do what you, what you think is best for your children, and if you can give them the best life possible, of course you're gonna do it. And um, while they would certainly have a, a different, maybe innate or, um, or a different sort of natural feeling of, of determination, and hard work ethic and, and all of the, the things I, I, I mentioned, desire, and they might have more of that if they grew up here. But my job is to teach them that in a different way, through leading through example. Um, and that's what we do, that's what I do. I, I also, one of the reasons I'm creating this video is so that they can look back on this and this will be out, this will be, this will be around in perpetuity. They can always look back and look at where their dad grew up and how their dad grew up and, uh, Here's the back of my apartment. This is the corner. That's the uh, that's the bedroom it's with the tape on the window. That's the bedroom that I uh, I grew up in. And um, there used to be a lot more trees out here. They cut them all down. It's a shame. And uh, there used to be a farm across the street. So we would look out the window here, and and that whole entire thing when that, up until I was about six years old was a farm. Um, there were horses. Unfortunately, it burned down one night. And, we actually sat at the window here watching all the, uh, the the farm burn down. It was what you did for fun in uh, 1978. If you see that little stoop right there, what we would do when we wanted a barbecue is we would get these little charcoal barbecues that, you, I mean, they were tiny. You would sit down on the stoop and you'd have this little barbecue. It was probably like a foot, a foot and a half wide, throw some charcoal in it, and uh, and you would sit and barbecue, and we'd sit and watch the cars go by. I mean, I can go on and on and on, but the, 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 the truth of the matter is, this for me was, was always an inspiration and always a, a, a drive to, to move on and to live in the way that I saw other people living. Now, that doesn't mean that, the, oops, that, doesn't mean that people with more money are happier. There's no connection between having money and being happy. What there is a connection with is feeling fulfillment and, and feeling and being content and having uh, having joy and, and um, there's no question having more means and having more more financial resources makes life more fun. The message here is I saw that I saw what was out there I saw the the things that, that were available to me and I knew that I wanted I didn't want to live here. This isn't what I wanted. I wanted to, you know, f go to college and and create a different life for myself. Um, and that's what I did. Interestingly enough, when I got done with college, I ended up coming back. There's a lot of these complexes right around here. I ended up coming back and living across the street in another garden apartment complex for f about five years. Ended up really living in these apartments until I was about 28. Um, when I met my wife, we bought one. <laughs> It was a great place to start because some of these are condos and we lived here. I lived in these garden apartments more or less until I was about 28 years old. Uh, my wife and I finally moved out of that garden apartment and then we moved into a um, a townhouse and I felt like I was living in a castle. I felt like a king once I got into that townhouse. I had never lived in a place so big. So yeah, it was, you're talking, I wasn't until I was in my mid thirties, about 35, that all the years and and decades of, of work, dedication, I mean, doing any job I could possibly do to, uh, to make money. Um, it was, I was about 35 when I finally really began to have a level of comfort and, um, my life actually began to feel different. I'm 48 now. So it's only been the past 13, 14 years that I've actually known what it felt like to achieve the dreams that I had always dreamed about. You know, it's a weird feeling when you're working and working and working because you have a dream and then you finally start to begin to realize that dream and you're like, wait a minute, is this actually happening? Wow, this is what it feels like. And that took a while, you know, and as I've progressed and progressed and things have kind of expanded and grown, it, it, was, it, was, a, it was a psychological process I had to go through to accept that, wow, I actually did this. And um, it's real and I can I can enjoy it and I can let the feeling be real 
and uh, and that's kind of where my life is now. Now I'm I'm really enjoying the fruits of the labor, um, decades of work, and uh, and here we are. So um, hopefully, uh, you know, you, see, you you get some value in seeing that no matter where you are at your, in your life, you can you can change things if you choose to. You just need to change your beliefs about things, think differently about things, and the uh, the thoughts become reality. They really do. For me, I'm still the same kid that grew up in these garden apartments. I'm still the same person. I'm still the same kid that grew up with nothing. I still know. I still feel that inside, which I think is one of the reasons that I have so much fun and enjoy so much having the ability to um, to give my children such fun experiences in life. We have the opportunity to live in a beautiful place. One of the biggest joys that I get out of where I'm at now is every opportunity I get, I give I give away, I give back. It could be something as small as, I went to the car wash the other day and I handed the guy a $20 bill who was cleaning the tires. Um, he he needs that and that made his day and, and that's, that's makes it's it really gives me a tremendous amount of, of of happiness to be able to do that i do that everywhere i go to a restaurant you know i know you're supposed to t- tip 20 percent. you know i'll double it you know because it's it, it's so meaningful i know what it feels like to have very little to almost nothing and i know that uh there was a reason why i over the years i've, I've become successful and i'm continuing to uh you know to grow and expand and be and, and and um you know, my, my success is, 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 is continuing. I'm working hard and now it's really, you know, it's just the true joy comes in giving back. I have a new podcast that's starting called digging in. That's going to be a phenomenal, um, podcast. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to deliver stories. We're going to share stories from people just like me Start out with nothing self-made who have reached some levels of whatever we want to call success. And we're going to be telling stories. They're going to be telling stories and it's about this. And and I'm going to dig in. We're going to ask a lot of questions of these people. I want you to know that you have the ability to change your thinking, change your beliefs, reach your dreams. And it doesn't matter where you start. It doesn't matter where you are at any point in your life. The second you change what you're thinking, you change the outcomes. So I'm sitting in the parking lot of a firehouse. I spent... I'm going to pull up in a second show you the front of the firehouse, but I don't want everybody to come out asking me why I'm sitting here. I haven't been a member here for a couple of years, but I spent 15 years of my life as a volunteer fireman. I joined this fire department, this firehouse when I was 18. I was in high school at the time, and I put in just about 15 years of service. Spent most of my free time here. Drills, meetings, hanging out. Uh, Being a fireman is really cool. I mean, you really develop such a brotherhood, and it really is. um, It's a real thing. Um unspoken but you really do rely on each other so here let me just show you this is uh this is a firehouse i belong to let's see if we can get this in here there we go pumpton falls volunteer fire company number three i belonged there for a long time Uh, i want to tell you why i did it when you volunteer you do something expecting nothing in return the ultimate to me one of the ultimate ways to volunteer is to do something like this to be a member of a fire department Um, or any sort of giving back to your community type of volunteerism. In this case, um, it was hard work, a lot lot of training, certainly is dangerous. I know people hear the word volunteer and they think you're not a real fireman. I had somebody say that to me a few weeks ago. Firemen's a fireman. Uh, A lot of towns have volunteer fire departments because they don't have the money to have paid fire departments. That's the only difference. Uh, We trained hard. We had a lot of serious fires. The last real fire that I was in before I really started to wind down my involvement was, something it was serious there was an explosion we had people that ended up jumping out windows of the second story of the house i ended up pulling a woman out of the basement um she ended up um, having third degree burns 100 percent of her body and she ended up not living um unfortunately but the uh the feeling that i used to get from pulling up to somebody's house and seeing their um the expression and the emotion you get from them when you know you're there to help them when they're feeling helpless is really rewarding and then actually being able to help. And in this case, you're, you know, you don't, you get mostly false alarms, but in this case, you're fighting fires. You're trying to save people's homes, their property, their, their memories, you know, and everything. And, uh, that's, um, that's what it's about. I encourage you to volunteer. I really do. It's, it's a, it's a wonderful thing. I went on to volunteer in other uh, organizations in other ways, but 
there's nothing more service driven and there's no better way to give to others than to do some sort of volunteer work. So uh, I missed a firehouse. I missed you know, flying down the street with the lights and sirens going and you know driving on the wrong side of the road and uh, flying that 100 foot tower ladder. And I missed the drills, believe it or not. You know, it's just, just a tremendous amount of camaraderie, but it was a wonderful experience. Um, at this point in my life, I have no intention of ever going back and doing that again. But it was a wonderful experience. I did it uh, in my you know, late teens, all through my 20s into my early 30s. And um, made a lot of good friends still to this day. Some of them are, are still good friends of mine. And uh, it had a uh, tremendous impact on my life. And I certainly know that I had an impact on the lives of other people. So uh, I encourage you to volunteer. I encourage you to, to be of service. I encourage you to give back in any way that you can. Volunteer, okay? Do something, volunteer, help other people out. All right, have a great day.